On the morning of October 27, 1964, a young teacher, Robert Becker, was walking by Boxburg's Lake, and made a gruesome discovery that buzzed across the entire country for months. Robert stumbled upon a suitcase that contained the body of a middle-aged woman. The body was without a head and without legs. There were multiple stab wounds, but the post-mortem examination revealed that the lady had been first beaten to death and her throat cut before the stab wounds were inflicted. The questions on everyone's lips and in every newspaper were, who is this woman? Where is her head and her legs? Who murdered her? Eleven days later, on November 7, during a school regatta at Wemapan, a bag containing the murdered woman's legs floated to the surface. Over the next 40 days, there was much speculation about where the woman's head might be. Then, on December 17, 1964, two boys who were fishing in the zoo lake found the head in a plastic bag. However, the head was already in an advanced stage of decomposition, and the police couldn't create a clear sketch of the face. Three young ladies, daughters of a Mrs. Catherine Louise Birch, contacted the police because they suspected that the body could be their mother. Both Mrs. Birch and her husband, Ronald Birch, were missing at that time. However, the daughters couldn't confirm with certainty that the police sketch was indeed that of their mother, so the police continued their investigation. Almost four years later, in November 1968, the daughters came across a letter that their mother had sent before her disappearance. The police were able to match a fingerprint on the letter to the body, finally giving a name to the body in the suitcase. After some setbacks, the police finally located Ronald Birch on November 27, 1968, in a room at the back of his mother's yard. Birch had no intention of going to prison and had made bracelets out of tin cans, which he connected with electrical wires to a wall socket. When the police opened the door to the room, Birch turned on the power and was dead within seconds. Ultimately, the mystery of the body in the suitcase was solved. Only older folks like me remember the excitement and speculation in the newspapers and on the radio back then. The fact that the murderer was found and took his own life added some poetic justice to the story.